What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today I want to talk about how I just got my third, or actually technically fourth, interest income pay raise in just a couple of weeks. We're going to get into it really quick, just in case you're new. Make sure to subscribe for a bunch of videos. Subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive bonus videos. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. Try out some G Fuel Energy Formula, $5 off your first order by clicking the link in the description. And of course, make sure to go and get your up to 12 free fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account. You can deposit as little as you'd like, even as little as a penny. It still works, it still counts. You still get your up to 12 free fractional shares. And if you set up auto pay, they're going to give you $10 cash to invest however you'd like. We will link in the description. Everything is linked in the description. All right, so today I wanted to quickly talk about a little update regarding my savings account. Now, as I've been saying for years and years and years and years and years, I personally do not believe in savings accounts for the long term. During times like these where rates are high, I don't see anything wrong with riding the high yield wave for as long as you can, generating a little bit of interest income while you're saving up for something that you want to purchase, or if you are intending on investing it, but you're not exactly sure how you want to invest it just yet, kind of like where I'm at right now, I don't see anything wrong with letting it sit in a high yield savings account while you figure things out. But here's the thing. A couple weeks ago, I made a video talking about how I took a screenshot of my savings account detail and you know they they bumped up the APY from I think it was 3.75 to 3.9 and I was like hey I'm gonna make a video about that I walked out the door to make the video I checked again and they had bumped it up to four percent so I was like oh wow two pay raises in a very short period of time then I made an update to that video I'm like hey it was 3.9 when I decided to make the video, but it's 4% now that I'm filming it. Followed it up with another video just a couple of days ago. They raised it up to 4.1, which I know, not that big of a jump. But check this out. We got another very, very small jump again. It's no longer 4.1. Now it's 4.15. Check that out right there. Current APY, 4.15. 15%. Not anything overly special, not anything to brag about, not anything to retire off of, but I really just mainly wanted to make this video as an update because I had explained in those videos, the other two videos, and I wanted this one to be a little bit different. I just posted both of those videos just a couple of weeks ago, so I don't want to make a third video talking about the same exact thing. I just wanted to give a little bit of an update. But in both of those videos, I had said the same thing, which was I want to ride the high yield wave for as long as I can. I don't believe rates are going to be high forever. <laughs> They're bound to get slashed at some point. So I'm going to ride the wave until they get slashed, pull the money out, and then put it somewhere else. Or if I decide to do something else before that happens, or if an opportunity presents itself while I'm waiting, then that's where I'll dive in. So I decided if I'm going to make updates on interest income pay raises, I will also make an update on an interest income pay cut, assuming that I still have my currency in the savings account at the time that rates get slashed. If that happens and my currency is still in there, I will make a video about the pay cut and I will talk about where I'm putting the currency instead. But as for right now, I don't know exactly where I'm going to put the currency. I also have a CD account where the maturity date on that is February of next year. So who knows, maybe I will ride this high yield wave into February of next year, assuming that rates haven't been completely slashed. Maybe they, maybe, you know, maybe the APY went down a little bit, but it's still, you know, considered a high yield savings account. Maybe I'll leave it in there. If it's between three and 4%, it's, it's fine with me. 
and maybe when my CD account matures, I will roll over into a new CD account with the currency that I have in there plus the interest that it generated. And maybe at that point, I will take the money out of my savings account and push it on into the new CD because then I can lock in a decent rate. Right now, again, rates might be lower at that point, but right now if I wanted to open up a CD account, the highest one I've seen is 4.75. I got a limited time offer on the one that I currently have. It's 5%. I don't believe that opportunity is going to present itself, but hopefully the 4.75 is still on the table by the time my current CD account matures. It was an 11 month term, 5% APY, and I had just decided that it was probably my best option. Now I did make a rookie mistake, which I've explained in other uploads, talking about how I was under the impression that the money that I have in there is locked in until the maturity date, but I could add money to it. I made the mistake. On, on certain CDs, you can do that. On the one that I have, you can't. So I didn't put as much in there as I probably should have because I thought I'd be able to keep, you know, feeding the beast, but it is what it is. So maybe, just maybe, come February, Assuming that nothing better is on the table, maybe I will take my entire, or maybe just maybe just a portion of my savings account, maybe all of it, who knows, my savings account, which I'm continuing to make contributions to on a weekly basis and generating interest income on a monthly basis, so the snowball is rolling. And rates keep on going up. I think I opened it up and it was uh, 3% or 3.25. Got bumped up to 3.3, then 3. 4, 3.5, 3.75, 3.9, 4, 4.1, now 4.15. So I've gotten a, <laughs> a lot of very small interest income pay raises. Well, then again, bumping up from, you know, 3 to now over 4% might not seem like a big jump, but that's actually a pretty big jump. But anyway, maybe, just maybe, come February, assuming that nothing better is on the table just yet, I will take some or potentially all of my savings account, which I'm continuing to add to on a weekly basis let it keep on building up and up and up and up and up while I'm waiting for an opportunity if nothing really stands out to me maybe I will take all of it or some of it and use it to roll over into a new CD when my CD account matures at, the, at, at this current point in time that's the only thing that really makes the most sense because I'm not going to use it to add to my Roth I make weekly contributions to that, and I'm already on track to maxing it out by the end of the year, and I don't really want to max it out early. I'd rather just do the weekly contributions. That way, it's, it, that way I can dollar cost average my way throughout the year. I enjoy doing it that way, so that's what I'm going to keep doing. So I'm not going to use it for my Roth. I could use it for my regular investment portfolio, in which case I would probably do... I would probably put like maybe a third of it into the S&P, a third of it into, and this is just me thinking off the top of my head. I, I don't really, this isn't a plan of mine necessarily. I'm just trying to think out loud as I'm going here. I'd probably put a th about a third of it into the S&P, a third of it into, or maybe even half into the S&P and half into more of an income producing index or something like that. But I'm thinking maybe a third S&P, third income producer, and third, I'm just not motivated to do individual stocks at this point. I, I like the ones that I have and I keep reinvesting dividends, but I'm not really, I can't see myself taking a third of my savings account and putting it into any individual. So I'd probably do half and half between the S&P and um, a dividend income index fund of some sort. Or maybe all into the S&P, who knows at this point. But uh, long story short, the only thing that makes more sense than just dumping it all into index funds would be to use it when I roll over into a new CD account. At this time, 
at this point in time, those are the only two things that make sense. And who knows, maybe I'll do half and half. Maybe I'll use half of my savings account to, you know, roll over into a new CD and the other half I toss into an index, an index fund. Right now, those are the only things that I have the desire to do. Those are the only things that I'm interested in. Those are the only things that I personally believe are going to provide me with the most value at this time. Now, also let's take into account that if rates get completely slashed before then, I might not be able to lock in an enticing rate with a CD. Maybe the best that they have to offer is like 3%, 2.5% or 3%. And in a situation like that, I don't know if it would really be worth locking up my currency for 12 to 18 months at a slightly lower rate. I kind of like 4% and up, which is why I really like the 4.75 that's currently on the table. But if rates get slashed before I have the opportunity to lock that in and it's no longer an option, then maybe I won't roll into a new CD. Maybe I'll take my savings account and my CD account, not roll into a new one, and then put it into index. It's, it's all circumstantial. It really all comes down to what's going on in the world in you know January and February of next year. Because that's when my maturity date is going to be approaching, and that's when I'm going to invest a little bit more of my energy in making a decision it's it man it's too it's too early to make any conclusive statements right now i don't know what interest rates are going to be i don't know what the market's going to look like at that point who knows in february of 2024 it might make more sense to use the savings account to buy gold or something like that which i haven't ruled out entirely but i it's unfortunately gold is just not providing me with the value that i'm looking for at this time it's just the precious metal, they just, they don't do what I need them to do. They, they do what other people need them to do, and that's perfectly fine, but it's just not what I'm looking for anymore, or at least now. I'll pick up a coin every now and then if I find something cool, but I'm just, I'm just not interested anymore. They don't really, they, they don't do what I'm, I need an asset class to do something specific, and that asset class does something specific, but not the specific thing that I'm looking for an asset class to do, if that makes sense, so. That's not, I don't believe that's really in the cards. I haven't ruled it out entirely. I'm not against it. I still think that it's a good idea for a lot of people. But for me at this time, I'm just more, more interested in uh, increasing income and beefing up net worth as opposed to looking for a method of wealth preservation because I haven't built up the wealth just yet. Once I build up the wealth, then yeah, down the road, I'll be looking for a way to preserve what I built up. But right now I, I need to, I need to create wealth first before I can think about preserving wealth that I haven't created just yet. Anyway, a lot of different options out there, a lot of different things on the table, a lot of different ways we can go. And it's not exclusive to a CD account and index funds. I can use it for a business as well. Although at this time, I'm not as motivated to do that either because I'd rather focus my time, energy, and effort on my career. I have something that I'm working on right now and it's going way better than I ever in a million years would have imagined it going. And now with this, this new position that I, that I just got promoted to, I'm eligible for a 5% company match for the 401k. When just a couple weeks ago, I wasn't even eligible to invest in the 401k without a com company match. See, before at a lower rank, I had to wait an entire year just to begin making contributions to a 401k. Now that I got promoted, before I even hit a year, now I unlock the ability to start making 401k contributions, and it's only been 10 months, not 12, and I get a 5% company match. Before the promotion, if I made it to a year and started making those 401k contributions, I wouldn't have gotten a match at all, which is okay. I still would have done it anyway, because it's, it's, it's about the long term. But if I get a 5% match on top of that, you better believe I will be making the most of that. Because think about it. If I take 5% of my own pay 
and use that as a 401k contribution and they match my 5%, I'm essentially seeing a 100% return every time I make a contribution. Like, let's just say hypothetically, $50 is 5% of my gross pay every week. That $50 goes in, they match it, it's $50. I put $50 in, now all of a sudden I got 100. Next week rolls around, I put another $50 in and another 100 goes in. Now, no, that's not exactly how it works long term, but if they match my 5% every week, that's a, that's pretty much a 100% return right right then and there. And I know there's market fluctuations and all that, but that's why I want to ma make the most of this. And I want to I want to take advantage and do 5% bare minimum. If I find it to be affordable and doable, and it's not going to have a negative impact on my lifestyle, which I can't imagine it having a negative impact because I have a very minimalistic lifestyle as it is, but I'm, I'm gonna see if I can do maybe 10% or more. Can I afford to make a 10 to 15% for a 1K contribution? Most people don't do that. Most people do enough to do the company match and even then, a lot of people don't want, you know, 5% of their pay, you know, taken away and putting, put into an account for later on down the road. Now, it's not really being taken away. It's just, uh, it's, it's being delayed. You get that money later on, plus way more than what you contributed. It's all about that long-term vision. But anyway, that's why I don't think that I want to use my savings account for anything business-related. I don't know if that's the smartest move right now when my eyes should be on the prize and, and the prize right now is is the career that I that I that I have and I wanna become more deep rooted in the company that I work for. I'm very, very new. I've only been around for ten or at this point eleven months. If any you know, I'm I'm a new hire, if you think about it. I'm new. And I climbed up fast faster than you know most people can say that they climbed up and i have a lot of momentum right now and i, I don't want to lose that and i and i want to i want to wait until you know the first quarter of next year maybe you know i, I want to do it in january but I, I i might i should probably wait until march of next year because that's when i can say that i've been doing this current role for an entire year see march of this year I was transferred over. So if I wait until March of next year, I can say, hey, I've done this position for an entire year and I've proved myself. I'm interested in what steps I need to take to go up the ladder one more step. What do I need to do? Or, or, or what's the path? What needs to be done? Or, 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 or how do I make my next move? You know, I, I, I could wait till, and talk about it in January and be like, hey, I've been doing this for, you know, since March of last year. Or I can wait until March and be like, hey, I've been doing this for a, a year now. And it's been going very, very well. What's the next step? That's where my time, energy, and effort is being invested. That's all I really care about at this time. And, you know, I know jobs and companies, they, they come and go and stuff like that. But... The 401k that I'm working on can be rolled over with a different company. So if, if down the road, a couple years down the road, I decide, hey, I want to I wanna work for that company instead, I can, I can leave and take my 401k with me. So, you know, you're not enslaved to the company necessarily or, or contractually stuck with them. But anyway, that's, you know, at, at the moment... I'm just tossing out a couple of ideas. You know, what can I do with my savings account when it's no longer paying me a high yield? Silver and gold, eh, they don't really do what, they don't really give me what I'm looking for. Individual stocks, eh, might be a little bit too concentrated for me. Business, I'd probably take away from the from my job. Oh, got kids coming up on bikes. Maybe um, Roth IRA. Eh, I'm already on track to maxing it out for the year.
putting it into index funds in my regular investment account. And that doesn't sound like a half bad idea. Or using it to roll on over into the next CD account, assuming that I could still get a high yield. Something appetizing, something that would, uh, something that I would be, oh God, something that I stepped on a rock and I rolled that under my foot. Something that would be enticing enough to lock up some currency for a year, year and a half to two years. Those are really the only two things that, you know, make the most sense at this point. Use the savings account to, you know, roll over extra money into a new CD when my maturity date hits in February, or if rates are slashed and I can't get a good deal on a CD, pump it into my regular investment account through one, potentially two index funds. So many different ways you can go. But anyway, all, all I really wanted to do in this video was uh, a little bit of an update on what the savings account is doing. I did just get a very, very small interest income pay raise. They bumped me up from 4.1 to 4.15%. <laughs> Feeling rich over here. But that's just what I decided to do. When the interest income goes up or down, might be kind of cool to make a video about it. But I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. I know I am personally not interested in savings accounts for the long term. Most of the people who watch my videos probably feel the same way. But if it's for something short term, if you're saving up for a large purchase or saving up for an investment, I see nothing wrong with it. Or during times like these where rates are high and you want to ride that wave, I see nothing wrong with that either. So at the moment, I'm currently doing both. I'm riding the high yield wave and also saving up for an investment. I don't know what that investment exactly is going to be. I have two pretty solid ideas at this time. Next week, that could change. By the time February of next year rolls around, that could change. So much can happen in a short period of time. But at the moment, those are at the top of the list. Those seem to make the most sense. But I'm curious, what are your thoughts right now? If you were in my shoes, where would you take your savings account dollars and put them if you were to take them out? Let me know in the comments. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. Subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive bonus videos. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel in the biggest possible way. We got t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, coffee mugs, and a bunch of different designs, many of which are helping raise funds and awareness for different charity organizations. Try out some tree fuel, or should I say G fuel. $5 off your first order by clicking the link in the description. Sugar-free, low calorie, packed with a whole bunch of vitamins. 50 different flavors to choose from. More than that, actually. This one is snow cone, perfect for the summer. $5 off your first order by clicking the link in the description. And of course, last but certainly not least, make sure to go and get your up to 12 free fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account. You can deposit as little as you'd like, even as little as a penny. Still works, it still counts. You're still gonna get your up to 12 free fractional shares. And of course, if you set up auto invest, they're going to give you $10 cash to invest however you'd like. Weeble link in the description. Everything is linked in the description. And once again, I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. When it comes to savings accounts, what are your thoughts? Are you for them? Are you against them? I'm personally against them for the most part, but in certain special circumstances like today, I don't see any harm. Let me know what you think of savings accounts, generally speaking. And let me know what you would do if you were in my shoes. Where would you put your savings account dollars right now or sometime in the near future? Let's just say sometime between today and February of next year. Where would you put those savings account dollars? How would you put them to work? What type of asset class would you be interested in? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time. Don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.